Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the Growth Execution Podcast. We are here every week to give you actionable tips on how to launch, build, and grow your business. Delighted to be joined this week by Dr. Kelly Henry of drkellyhenry.com. Dr. Kelly, how are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your great show, Mal. Appreciate it. It's really, really good to have you. I know you've got some amazing stuff to talk about today as well. So um, as you know, we are mildly obsessed here with growth and particularly growth execution, how you actually um, execute on those ideas. Now, over the past year or so, a lot of people will be having some great business ideas and great concepts. What's your kind of top tip for people to get their business out there? Just do it before, just go for it. Is the main thing. You, you need to have a plan, but you need to go for it. Nothing's going to be perfect. That's not going to be the ideal time. It's not going to be, uh, everything's just going to be lined up perfectly like you want it to be. You just need to step forward in faith and then course correct as you, as you move forward. Yeah, absolutely love that. I mean, there is so much um, opportunity, perhaps particularly, again, when you're sitting there staring at a screen for days and days on end to, to get, let that procrastination sort of sneak in and, and almost over perfect it. Um, you know, for, for you and perhaps thinking about the businesses that you've seen, um, what, what do you think um, kind of marks out a great, uh, a great launch from, from one that might not make? Well, you, you know, you need to do all the all the detail work. Obviously, you got to have the good product and and understand it, and and you you need to know if it's going to be viable. You know, do people want this? Is it is it a good time for those type of things? So you need to do your due diligence there. You need to narrow down your your avatar or your ideal audience, and and make sure you understand them and their needs and and how this would fit them because that makes it a lot easier to market to. Uh, and, and get the, the word out about your profit, uh, your product so, or your service, so to speak. So those two, two things are huge. And then after that, once you get narrowed down and you move forward, again, is just take that leap of faith, but also you just have to be able to stay consistent, stay determined, stay be able to handle the up and downs. So, cause there will be ups, ups and downs, you know, yeah. there's high points, there's low points and you can't let those low points take you out of your game and knock you, knock you out of the game. You got to be able to stay focused, not look at them as failures, but just push through them, understand what's going on. Look at things objectively when you have issues arise, course, correct, pivot, you know, better intelligently move forward, uh, but don't let it knock you out of the games. Yeah, I think that's that's so important, isn't it? Because, you know, it, it, when people do hit those roadblocks or those bumps in the road, you know, you've, you've got to have that almost resilience, isn't it? To, to just kind of that, keep on keeping on. Yeah, keep on keeping on despite, you know, despite what comes out, you know, pandemics hit, things change all of a sudden. Um, if you um, were looking at kind of maybe some of the businesses that, that, that may have started before the pandemic and, and then now, do you think there's a difference uh, in, in what's required of entrepreneurs in, in, in 2021 to say 2019? There is, you know, the, the pandemic is, you know, as much as we want it to be over and move back to normal life, you know, we have a new normal. I hate to say that and I hate that that term, but there's a new normal. So you just have to look, we're looking at life in, in a, with a different lens is what yeah. we are. And so you have to understand that um, and adapt. And that's a lot of being an entrepreneur, whether we have a pandemic or the economy tanks or whatever the case may be, you got to be able to adapt to the situation, to the different environments that, that come that <laughs> are unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't know what's coming down the, the pike. You don't know what, what's going to change. You don't know. I mean, there's, there's so many variables that can happen. You just have to be able to understand, look at things objectively, adapt, course correct, and keep moving forward. Yeah, well, one of the things that, that we obsess about a little bit here at Grocery is, is about this kind of product concept. So, so that concept, that drive that you have to fix this problem, and it's almost that kind of, it comes from within you and that passion. Um, do you think it's possible to set up a successful business without that, without the kind of, that, that real kind of deep set belief that this is what you're here to do? It, it makes it a whole lot more difficult if you don't have that deep down fire, that burning fire and passion, like you just said, yeah. um, because that that is a key component to helping you stay resilient. When you have that passion to get that that product out there, that service out there to help the masses. Um, if it's not there and you're you're not passionate about it, 
that first roadblock may be it for you. You know, that yeah. first stumbling block, that first obstacle may just knock you out of the game. Well, that's hey, not working on, you know, go, go back to my nine to five job or whatever the case may be. So um, you really need to have that, that deep seated passion, like you just mentioned. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think that it is, as you say, it's that thing that gets you over those those real kind of challenging moments. Is it's not necessarily the the how you're going to do it. You know, you can change that, right? But the why is the kind of consistency and the thing that you exactly. really want to keep moving towards. Um, but when it comes to things like um, sort of branding and 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 service, and I know obviously you're a, uh, you've got a great book out all about customer service, and you know that this this is something that a lot of businesses. Um, uh, they, they, they're not great at, right? You know, there's something that that, that that seems to be the afterthought. How do you describe that to the clients that you work with? What's your kind of take? Well, I, I simply explain that customer service either enhances everything they do in their business or it detracts from everything they do in their business. It's really that simple. There's no neutral to it. So it can be an afterthought, but they're making a choice either providing a stellar experience for their customers or a cruddy one. Um, so they can decide what they want to do. If you're, if you're providing a great service, great customer service, you're going to have a better business. You're going to make more fraud profits. You're going to retain customers. You're going to, you're going to create referrals. If you're not, you're going to be struggling. You're going to have to keep marketing and keep driving in new sales and, and try to push new customers in. And then they're out and gone because the, the service was cruddy. So again, there's no neutral to it. Customer service is either going to enhance or take away from your business. Yeah, I think that's really true. And, and I think you know, what you said about the, the referral side of things. So it's almost, it, you know, in some ways you can look at it as a marketing cost, right? You know, essentially what you're doing is you are marketing through those current customers to potential future ones. Exactly. In yeah, fact, I, the, the, the theory is, or not even a theory, the fact is great customer service is the new marketing uh, because yeah. it generates those referrals and it keeps those, those customers in your business. Yeah. And, and then the flip side, obviously, as you say, if, if you're churning through customers and then other customers, um, you're going to end up with, a, it, it's going to become very much more difficult to source the next pool of uh, victims if I can absolutely call them. <laughs> exactly it's so much more stressful to run a business like that where it's just you know more sales more sales more sales um, but there's no growth you're just plateaued or even declining yet you're pushing pushing and pushing for more sales it's I call it the hamster wheel of business it's just difficult and it's a lot more stressful to run a business that way so true and exhausting as well um, and what you said as well I, I, earlier on about the sort of niche side of things so so had how do you or how does a, how does a new entrepreneur um, coming in knowing roughly what they want to, to do in terms of the product and, and that sort of thing how important is it to, to zero in on a small niche as opposed to going wide in the market well it, it, it it's vital <laughs> I mean it's so incredibly important um, unless you have a you know a product that you know, you can take to the masses, but very few products and services are like that. So you really want to niche down because it makes your marketing so much more effective when you're, when you're so narrowed down to your ideal target, your ideal avatar, then you can speak directly to their pain points or to the, the point you're trying to make or the point that your product or service will take care of. Um, and that's what will resonate and that's what will draw people in. If it's just in general, you know, you're just throwing mud at the wall and then some may stick, some may not, but it's just so difficult and it's way more expensive that way. So when you're dialed in, narrowed down, know the pain points of your avatar and you're speaking directly to them, you're pointing your, your finger right at them with their, with your marketing efforts. Um, people are more apt to say, Hey, I need that. I want that, that that's going to help me out. And it, it is much more effective that way. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I think that there are so many kind of groups now and online groups, and there have always been groups and societies and people who self-identify in a certain, uh, with a certain belief system or a certain, you know, interest in, in something. Um, but online, they all get together and there's, you know, there are conversations going on all the time. And if you can break into that, that group, then that's your kind of, that's your initial adopters or that's certainly your, your next market, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you think that there's this sort of um, a key piece of advice that you either received yourself uh, or that you give to, to your clients that that is the thing that you see the kind of lights go on and we're going, oh, right, OK, that's that's kind of that's really useful. Is there one thing that you find yourself saying more often? 
there, there's two pieces of advice that uh, yeah. I'd like to mention that, that, that help me keep me motivated and, and focused. One is there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. So this goes back to the resilience and the persistence of being an entrepreneur and, and pushing forward to your goals and dreams. Yeah. yeah. Stumbling blocks, you know, obstacles, we mentioned that, you know, and they may seem like failures, but they're, they're only failures if you quit. So if you look at them, step back, look at things objectively, understand where things may have gone wrong, what you could have done different, what you need to do differently and pivot and, and move more, move forward more intelligently, then it's not failure. It's just feedback. So you just, just look for the feedback. Um, so no failure, just feedback. Second thing is you have to understand business is all about math. Mm -hmm. Business is math. So it, that helps me take the emotions out of it. It's all math, mm -hmm. you know, I need to get my, the word out. I need to do so much marketing and messaging and, and all the things that I need to get the word out and, and continue to get, keep my product top of mind or my service top of mind. It's just all about math. Um, and if you do enough, you know, it's going to affect your sales. It's going to cause you to have sales and, and clients and those type things, but it's, it's all math. Uh, it's not about emotions. It's all math and business. I love that. Both of those are so, so valuable. And you're right, you know, so they, uh, for the, the feedback one, I really I think is brilliant. So yeah, there's no failure, any feedback. And then yes, in, in sales, particularly people often talk about, you know, the next, every no gets you closer to yes. Exactly. But that's true, right? <laughs> that is actually <laughs> mathematically on average true. And and I love that. I think that, you know, the sales side of things is something that a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, they, they don't kind of, they're not scared of it, but it's just kind of one thing that they hope their product is so amazing and the marketing is so impactful that basically people will be queuing up. But it doesn't always work like that, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you have to be able to sell. Um, yeah. And this goes way back to what we just mentioned a few minutes ago about having that passion. Uh, yeah. When you have that passion for your service product and what you're, you're trying to deliver, um, that, that escalates your ability to sell tremendously. If you don't have that passion and you're just going through the motions, consumers know that. They see that, they feel that, and it's, it, it takes away from sales. It's much more difficult to make that sale if that passion is, is non-existent. Yeah, I think that's really true. And I think as well, what it helps to do is to recruit, you know, team members, you know, if you're looking for investors, things like that, if they can see what you're really passionate about, then there's an alignment opportunity there, isn't there, that they can absolutely. They can and, th and they're only going to be as passionate as you are about it, you know, the owner, the entrepreneur, the one starting out. So if you, you know, if your fire's only burning, you know, if you only have a medium burn, then you know, your staff and, and as you're scaling, they're not, you know, they won't even have medium. They're going to have a low burn. So yeah. you've got to keep that fire burning. So everybody else's fire burned and passion to, to be able to continue to work and sell and do the things that uh, will help your business uh, grow. Yeah, brilliant. Um, do you have a view about, um, sort of, and let me just touch for a brief on kind of investment side of things. Do you have a view on whether um, businesses should go for investment early, late or at all? And, or, or do you kind of have a, a way of looking at a business that might help a, a, a budding entrepreneur to know whether they're going to need that sort of um, resource? Yeah, that's a, that's a broad question. So, yeah. and it depends on the market, the, the service, the, the product, so many variables will go in there. Um, now speaking personally for me, I'm just a, I'm just a self-made guy. Well, not a, a self-made guy in the sense that, um, you know, I just want to do it on my own and, 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 uh, you know, I have help, I have coaches, I have, you know, a study and do things that are going to help me be successful. Um, but I don't want to have people, you know, with their hands in my, uh, not necessarily my pockets, but my hand in their pocket and they're directing a lot of my thoughts about her. So I want to, yeah. I want to push forward that way. Um, yeah. so again, it just, it, it depends on the entrepreneur. Um, hmm. and, because they're, they're, I've, I think that there's also the case right now that, that a lot of people are moving out of the corporate world, you know, perhaps with furlough having happened or redundancies and things like that through the pandemic, the desire to then go from working on behalf of somebody else or having somebody else tell them what to do right. to having somebody else <laughs> investing yeah. in them and telling them what to do probably doesn't work. Right. 
And I'm going to call my own shots. Exactly. So, yeah. Roll your own boat. That's, absolutely. That's yeah. pretty much my mentality. Yeah. And I think for, for a lot of entrepreneurs that that's right as well. And then those are the risks um, to, to those listening that, that if you do, yes, there is benefit obviously in getting investment, but it can have a, a drawback in terms of, in terms of control of your business as well. Um, do you have um, somebody or, or perhaps uh, when you look around at other entrepreneurs or people that have, have come before, do you have anybody that's kind of inspires you? Anybody that you sort of think is, um, is is doing doing something that you think is pretty amazing? There's a gentleman by the name of Grant Cardone. I don't know if you're aware of him. Yeah. He's big in the yeah. United States. Yeah. Written several books. Sales guru, motivational guru. Um, I, I just like his style. I, I, he resonates with me. He's kind of in your face and just straightforward and just get after it and just keep pushing forward and maximum effort. So again, that resonates with me. So I follow him. I've read his all his books and. Uh, he really inspires me just to just keep pushing. You know, it doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter if it's the weather's bad. It doesn't matter if, you know, it really doesn't matter. Yes. You know, there's, no, there's no circumstance. It's just get your butt in gear and just keep pushing forward. That's all that matters. It's it's the effort you put in that ultimately is going to uh, create this success that you want. Yeah. And, and it, it goes back to and speaks to what you were saying earlier on about that kind of, it's maths, right? It's you, the, there is so much, it's it's that that it, it was a Goldwyn and um, Samuel Goldwyn who said that the harder I work, the luckier I become. You know, everybody yeah. looks at it and just goes, "That's that you're successful at doing that." And it's like been you know however many years of really a lot of hard work. And and perhaps for our new entrepreneurs, there needs to be an understanding that that it's not necessarily going to happen overnight. You mentioned, and, and you know, to touch on that point, social media to me is just discredits that so much because people just have this idea that, you know, they see these posts of, you know, people with their Lamborghinis and their private jets and which may be true or not, whether these people are own those things or not, uh, they, they just be a spoof and they, you know, they, they rented it for the day and that type of thing. You're going to zoom back around. So. Exactly. You know, that, <laughs> Hey, if I take this one program and, you know, within two weeks, I'm going to, I'll be able to own a private jet and whatnot. And they just lose sight of, you know what, it takes a lot of work, a lot of determination, a lot of persistence. Yeah. You just have to understand that it's, it's, you know, it's not easy a lot of the time. Sometimes it's, it's easier than others, but sometimes there's a struggle there and you have to just keep pushing through it. So hard work, hard work will get you there, uh, yeah. but you have to be determined to, make sure you want to go ahead and do put in the hard work that will uh, create the success. Yeah. And, and I, you know, there's that kind of ultimate reward that comes of that as well. You know, if it, if it has been hard, then, you know, that, that when you eventually make it there, then that can feel a lot more, um, a lot more rewarding, I think, you know, than perhaps uh, yeah, absolutely. You, or falling into it. it yeah. It'll be, it'll be more meaningful to you as well that, you yeah. know, put in all this work. It yeah. wasn't easy. Yeah, um, but I I persisted through, and there were some tough times. But here, I I did it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I, when we think about um what's coming down the track, so you know, we're twenty twenty one now. Um, are, are there any kind of trends, any sort of like um sort of startups that you see that that are, that are really sort of getting some traction? Is there any sort of um futurism that you can kind of uh, sort of trends coming down that you think um think are, are going to be big? You know, to be honest with you, I I. I um, haven't, I haven't seen anything other than um, being able to move your business to virtual or online space, or at least having an access uh, aspect of that, yeah. uh, regardless of what service you provide, if you're brick or mortar, or whatever the case may be, to be able to function uh, on the virtual side of things as well. Um, and a lot of business were pushing that way and, and, you know, was set up prior to uh, last year, but it really has become more and more prevalent and prominent um, to be able to do that. So uh, it's a big aspect of uh, each and every business and, and consumers are expecting that from almost every business. Um, yeah. So if you ha don't have that, you're, you're missing the boat and it's, uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to play against your, your business. Yeah, I think that's right. It's, it's funny. So I, I work in the property market. I've got clients that work in there. And, and you know, historically, people go and wander around a property and view it and all that sort of stuff. But now there's, you know, almost sprung up. Or, they, they kind of always been there, but not the adoption hadn't quite been uh, all that. And now, you know, every single agent or real estate agent, as, as you call them, um, were, have has their own remote viewing capability. And people can walk through these 3D walkthroughs everywhere. And it's, it's just phenomenal. 
just yeah. how things have changed and so quickly right yeah yeah and it happened quick yeah and this and this is the kind of world that, that you know again if you've got your if you know why you're doing something then the what can change along the way and you can adapt and, and move with the move with the times Absolutely. um Dr. Kelly, it's so great to, to speak to you. Thanks so much for, for your time today. I wonder if people are looking for uh, looking to find out more about your book and, and you know what what it is the things that you offer. What 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 are the things that, that you're doing and that you're seeing out there? Um, the main place to find me is my website, drkellyhenry.com. So drkellyhenry.com, all one word. Find about more about me, like you, you mentioned, uh, my book programs. Schedule a call with me and talk more about how I can help your business. My focus is to help businesses through customer service to accelerate their growth and profit. Um, and I have a simple system that we plug in and, and, and does just that. Um, and regardless of what business it is, it doesn't matter how good your customer service is, it can always be better. And we can help you enhance that, plug it in, straighten it up, smooth it out, and enhance every every part of your business. Like I mentioned earlier on, where you know businesses, their customer service either enhances or takes away from your business. So let's create it where it's enhancing it, it's making it better, and so your business can excel, thrive, grow, and profit. Uh, my book speaks to that. Obviously, it's it's uh, called Define and Deliver Exceptional Customer Service. I like to call it a success manual of customer service. It's uh, it's an easy read. It's only about 150 pages long. It's not full of any fluff. It's just to the point actions, ideas, principles that a business owner leader can take, implement and start improving their customer service to, again, achieve that uh, profit and growth that uh, maybe they haven't been able to with uh, other other ideas and principles. So again, drkellyhenry.com, easiest way to find me. Again, you can you schedule a call uh, with me. We can talk about your business, where things may be off, where I can step in and start helping your business grow and profit. Brilliant, superb. And listen, I think that focus on customer service, as you say, is just so important and so easily missed with all of the other things that, that entrepreneurs have to kind of deal with. So thank you very much indeed for, for being part of the Growth Execution Podcast this week. It's great to see you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been an honor. Pleasure. Genuine pleasure. Um, that's Dr. Henry, Dr. Kelly Henry, sorry. And um, do go and see drkellyhenry.com um, and make sure you check out uh, his book as well. Um, thanks so much for being uh, listening into the Growth Execution Podcast this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with plenty more actionable tips on how to build, scale, and grow your business. Uh, for now, though, uh, that's it. Have a great growth week. And if you're ready, let's get growing.